Welcome to Sunday Worship. So happy that you could join us. Let's begin by confessing our faith through the Apostles' Creed. Let's confess our faith together. Ready to begin? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth in the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's close our eyes and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Let's ask God to come and have his way. I believe that he has a plan for us. Um, not just a general plan for your life, like an occupation or uh, who you're going to marry or something like that, but he has a plan for you today, right now. And we want to be a part of that plan because everything he offers to us is good. What is this plan? It's to meet us, to give us faith, to give us strength, to give us His love. And so I was praying right now that we will be able to follow that plan and be a part of that plan and receive the great things He has prepared for us today. So let's pray for that today. Let's pray. But we believe you have a plan for us. And in a plan, we believe that you have come for us today, Lord, through this worship time. You want to speak to our hearts. You want to lift up our spirit. You want to give us strength. You want to pour your love out to us. So help us, God, to open our hearts to you. Help us to receive every great gift that you have prepared for us today. For you are God who offers great things to us. We thank you, God. Let's sing together. God is able. God is able. He will never fail. He is almighty God. Greater than all we see. Greater than all we ask. He has a Yes. 
whatever the world thinks is good. Lord God, we don't have to follow those patterns because we are already forgiven, we are already loved, we are already accepted, and we already have a place that you are preparing for us in heaven, waiting for us, Lord. So please, God, help us and remind us of who we are through your words today. get into today's uh, Bible passage. It comes from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7. We're going to read 24 to 27. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Let's read in one voice together. This is the word of God. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your presence in our lives and for this time where we can not only worship you, but be reminded of your love for us. Please help us to give this time to you, to put aside any distractions and dedicate this time to you so that we can really get closer to you and believe in you more um, after and through this time, Lord God. So please be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, what would be your dream house? How would it look like? Perhaps near the beach? Uh, you might talk about design, perhaps size of the garage or front yard or having a basketball court, a big kitchen, how many bedrooms. But I guarantee you that when you explain your house, you will never talk about uh, the foundation of the house. Like, well, if I have a house, I want to have a strong foundation. You just assume that the foundation is there. The foundation is the bottom. Uh, it's what makes, makes sure that the whole house will stand firm. What good is a beautiful mansion if the house is built on mud or sand? That when it rains, the house will crumble and fall. A lot of you don't do too much makeup. But I learned, especially for guys, right? I learned that it's vital for women to put on foundation makeup before they put anything else on. If you sh go straight in with the makeup, it doesn't come out very good. Okay, I don't know this from personal experience. You need that foundation makeup. Or when we look at even the game Jenga, I think we've all played Jenga, right? The wooden block game. Some people like to take the bottom ones out, you know? When there's three and instead of taking the middle one out, and you have the two that makes it still pretty you know, strong, they take the sides out, right? So that the whole thing is holding on just that one block, right? All blocks are standing on that block, so that foundation is not very firm. And that's the point of the game, right? It, it, it shakes and it's scary. Jesus is speaking a story to the crowds, and he's teaching them a wise way to live. And he shares his story in verse 24, if we see. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And in verse 26, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Right? Uh, what is common in both verse 24 and verse 26. The foolish man and wise man both hear. Okay? They both hear the words of Jesus. They both have access to it. This means that Jesus' words are available for all of us, including all the people in the world, for the foolish man, for the wise man. But the key is 
Jesus says, do you follow it or not? Do you hear it and follow it? Or do you just hear it and disregard it? If we follow these words, we are like the wise men who build their house on the rock. If we follow what the Bible says, then we are wise. Why are we wise? Let's look at the answer in verse 25 and 27. Let's read verse 25 and 27. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. As opposed to verse 27, the same rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. What is common in verse 25 and 27? The strong rain, the streams rising, the strong winds, it hit the house. What does the rain, storms, and strong wind represent? These are all hardships. All people go through hardships. Some people believe that if we become a Christian, that the storms of life or these hardships will disappear or lessen. I'm sorry to inform you, but Christians may deal with even more right? difficulties and sufferings. But the point is, everyone goes through difficult times. Small hardship, big hardship, extreme hardship. Storms of life may include not getting into the college you want, getting kicked out of college or school, being betrayed by a friend, being hurt by a family member, doctor saying you have a serious illness or disease, close friend or family member being in severe pain. You've been through many, and you will go through so many of these hardships. When I was 20, I lost my best friend to a motorcycle accident. It was one of the toughest storms in my life. Everyone goes through these storms. It could be getting your heart broken by a girl or boy. I remember I had a friend who was smart and chill and, and very confident, even a little cocky, you know, a little arrogant, right? And he started to like this girl, but perhaps she was out of his league. Yet, you know, he still wanted uh, her to be uh, his girlfriend. And so she was meeting him a little bit and they were hanging out. And after some time, I see him with some flowers. And it was too early, brothers and sisters, it was too early. And I asked him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm going to ask her to be my girlfriend. And I knew that this was not a good idea, but he was so confident. Remember, I said he was arrogant. I was concerned for him, so I said, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Okay? Long story short, he comes back very disappointed, heartbroken. He was devastated. I think many of us have experienced heartbreak from uh, the opposite gender. If things are good, if things go our way, it seems fine. But when things don't go our way, and we do not have a strong foundation, we will often be devastated like this. How can we guard our hearts so that we will always be happy, always be content, always be satisfied, always be thankful, and we will never have to experience devastation. Remember, we said those who follow Jesus' words are wise. Why are we wise? Because the Bible tells us how to survive the storms. If we follow these instructions, right, we can know that we will never crash down and die because Jesus is the foundation. We Christians are so blessed because whether it's sunny and beautiful outside, or whether there's a typhoon and a hurricane, our hearts will not crumble and fall. What does this mean? It means whether everything about life is great, you're getting all the great grades, you got wonderful friendships, you got good health, good spiritual health, good family life, or if everything in life is going wrong, failing classes, friends leaving you, serious illness, family breaking apart, the Bible tells us that no matter what, we are loved by God. And that love never changes. 
Jesus' words tell us that God has a great plan for us in our lives, that we have a home in heaven for all of eternity. Jesus is the foundation of our house, which is our heart. And Jesus is the rock. He never changes, never stops loving us, no matter what happens in our lives, never stops caring for us, never leaves us. The key is not to just hear God's words, because everyone can hear it. It's those who put it in to practice. We want to follow it, to trust it, to obey it. Right? Many of us have been uh, in uh, team sports, right? and we've had a coach. And imagine the coach. This coach has a game plan. He knows. He's, he has experience. He's been you know, a pro. He knows how to play the game. And so he tells you how to succeed. Imagine if he tells you, hey, right? hey, Hami, hey, Josh, hey, uh, Elijah, move to this position. Watch out for this. This is how you can score. This is how you can beat the defense. And you nod your head, right? And you go in the game, and you completely disregard what he says. What's going to happen? Are you going to get good results? No. You're going to go through the same mistakes and mistakes again. And he's just going to take you out of the game. You're never going to play again, right? But if we follow the instructions, what's going to happen? He's going to say, great job. And he's going to give you more instructions. And he's going to give you the best way to succeed every time. And that's sort of like our relationship with God. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to be happy. And that's why he gives you these instructions. You might think, oh, I can't do it. But he says, I'll be there with you. I'll encourage you. I'll fight for you. I'll make sure you succeed. Right? We have the best coach available. But sometimes we become arrogant and foolish. We disregard his advice. And what happens? We fail. We fall. We become devastated, brokenhearted. We don't want to live. We, we don't want to love people. We become even more selfish and self-centered. But when we listen to his advice, he will help us to succeed, to have our hearts firm and, and, and not be shaken because Jesus is our foundation. No matter what extreme hardship may come your way, you will not be um, crumbled into pieces. So right now, I want you guys to close your eyes. Okay? I know it's uh, past 11, so you don't have to sleep, okay? Just close your eyes, but don't go to sleep. And I want to ask you to picture your dream house. Since house represents our hearts, picture your dream heart. How is your heart? Is it strong? Is it healthy? Is it very hurt? Is it broken? Is it tired or weary? Is it filled with fear, anxiety, or worries? Now look at the foundation of that heart. Is it Jesus? Is it God's word or is it something else? We don't have any hope in this life if Jesus is not your foundation. When the storms come, we will be broken. Our hearts will crash and we will fall deeper and deeper into sin. But if our foundation is Jesus, whatever hardship may come, even when we stumble and fall, you will be able to survive and be victorious because that foundation never changes. Because the sin or hardship does not define us. Jesus and the Bible defines us. We are what he says we are. He never stops loving us and helping us. Not only is he our firm foundation for here, for us here on this earth, but he also is preparing us a house for us in eternity. That we can live forever with no more dying and crying, nothing but joy and happiness. This house he promises us. If Jesus is your foundation, if the Bible is your rock, continue trusting in him and he will lead you. But if Jesus is not your foundation, if you are the foolish builder, 
Brothers and sisters, let's replace that foundation. If the Bible is something you hear but you don't follow, ask Jesus to be your rock. Trust that the Bible will lead you to victory over all the storms in your life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. And all of us are building our hearts and our lives. And you tell us today that the wise builder is the one who has the foundation, on, uh, who has a strong foundation built on the rock. That rock is you, Lord. And our hearts are that house. And if we build our hearts, our lives on you and your words, no matter what storms may come in our lives, no matter what hardship, even when things don't go our way, we won't be devastated because we know you are for us. We know that you have a great plan for us. We know that we can lean on you. So help us, God, to put our trust and hope in you and follow your words and see your amazing promises come to life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we have some announcements. Um, we have Sunday worship at church at 11 a.m. We've been having more and more students. So please come. Uh, please keep your masks on. And um, if you really want to be blessed, if you really want to give your best to God, there's no choice. You really want to come to church on Sunday. Uh, but if you cannot, I understand, please join us online and, and, and try your best to um, to take that 11 o'clock time and, and dedicate it to God. And also if you could sort of wash up a little bit and, and, and really prepare your heart for worship, it's going to make a world of a difference. Uh, our Saturday small groups, 8 p.m., uh, Bible study is continuing on. Please join us. It's been a blessing. Let's have some fun. Let's, let's get deeper into the Word and, and be accountable to each other, especially as we open up more and more. Let's finish with the Lord's Prayer. We close our eyes and pray this prayer together. Ready to begin? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hope you guys have a blessed week. Hope to see you soon. Please be safe out there, okay?